In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Good afternoon to you all, and welcome to uh, Truro Cathedral for this uh, Royal British Legion Remembrance Service. It is good uh, for us to have so many of you here in this place today as we do the important business of remembering those who paid the ultimate sacrifice in search of justice and of peace. It's also very good to be able to welcome those who are joining us through the live stream from many parts of the county and at times many parts of our world. We meet in the presence of God. We commit ourselves to work in penitence and faith for reconciliation between the nations, that all people may together live in freedom, justice, and peace. We pray for all who in bereavement, disability, and pain continue to suffer the consequences of fighting and terror. We remember with thanksgiving and sorrow those whose lives in world wars and conflicts past and present have been given and taken away. Almighty and eternal God, from whose love in Christ we cannot be parted either by death or life, Hear our prayers and thanksgivings for all whom we remember this day. Fulfill in him the purpose of your love and bring us all with them to your eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
for the years condemned. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.
ever-living God. We remember those whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples, and establish harmony among the nations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Gospel of St. John. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask, him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the word of the Lord. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Today I want, to, I want to help us think about what this day, Remembrance Sunday, really means. And we're going to do that with the help of a story and also with the help of something you are probably all wearing, by which I mean a poppy. And if you're not wearing a poppy, you can probably see one. So let us start with the poppy, and I will tell the story a little later. The reason we use a poppy to help us remember is that they were amongst the very first things to start growing again in the muddy fields of World War I as a sign of hope after all of the bloodshed and the suffering. But have a look at your poppy, or someone else's if you're not wearing one. There are three parts to the poppy, and we're going to think about what each might mean. First of all, there is the bit in the middle. So what might that represent? Well, the bit in the middle could represent all of the terrible parts of war. The hate, the suffering, the pride, the violence. Those are horrible things that cause, have caused, and still cause great pain. In the end, it is people who harbour such hate, suffering, pride, and violence in their hearts that make war. Wars come from people. People like Hitler, of course, or 
Vladimir Putin. But if we're honest to people like us, there is something of all of that in us too at times. And we need to recognize that. We are not free from hate or pride or even perhaps violence at times. And all of those things in us need dealing with too. Now look at the red part of your poppy. What might the red represent? Well, of course, the red can represent blood and the fact that many people gave their lives in wars so that we can live in a free country. And that is one way that those negative parts of life can be dealt with, by standing up to them, even at the cost of losing your life, as so many people have done who we remember today. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And that brings me to the story I mentioned. It's a story that tells the story of one soldier who stood up to evil and lost his life. It's from a book called Miracle on the River Kwai. It's a true story of what happened in one prisoner of war camp during the Second World War when Allied soldiers were building the infamous Burma Railway. It goes like this. The day's work had ended. The tools were being counted as usual. As the party was about to be dismissed, the guard shouted that a shovel was missing. He insisted that someone had stolen it to sell to the local people. Striding up and down before the men, he ranted and denounced them for their wickedness and most unforgivable of all, their ingratitude to the emperor. As he raved, he worked himself up into a paranoid fury. Screaming in broken English, he demanded that the guilty one step forward to take his punishment. No one moved. The guard's rage reached new heights of violence. All die, all die, he shrieked. To show that he meant what he said, he cocked his rifle, put it to his shoulder and looked down the sights, ready to fire at the first man at the end of them. At that moment, one soldier stepped forward, stood stiffly to attention and said calmly, I did it. The guard unleashed all his whipped up hate. He kicked the helpless prisoner and beat him with his fists. Still the soldier stood rigidly to attention with the blood streaming down his face. His silence goaded the guard to an excess of rage. Seizing his rifle by the barrel, he lifted it high over his head and with a final howl brought it down on the soldier's skull. He sank limply to the ground and did not move. Although it was perfectly clear that he was dead, the guard continued to beat him and stopped only when exhausted. The men of the work detail picked up their comrade's body, shouldered their tools and marched back to camp. When the tools were counted again at the guard house, no shovel was missing. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. That soldier stood up to darkness and evil even at the cost of losing his life. But the red part could remind us also, should remind us also of Jesus. Jesus, who was willing to lay down his life, just as did that soldier. Jesus didn't lay down his life for a small group of people like that one soldier, but for everyone in the world. He stood up to darkness and evil, even at the cost of losing his life. And he did that to deal with all of that negative stuff inside us. And he really did deal with it. On the cross, through his death, Jesus dealt with all of the evil in the world once and for all. 
His death was not a defeat, it was a great victory. And we know that because he rose again from death, because death and darkness could not hold him. He was bigger and greater than all of that. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. But what then finally about the green part of your poppy? What about the leaf? Well, in that prison camp, everything began to change after that soldier died. People began to care for one another and support one another and make life better for one another. And is, it is the same with Jesus. Everything changes because he has dealt with darkness once and for all. Our lives and this world can be better because of all that he has done. And that is because love is so much more powerful than all of that negative stuff. The red part of your poppy is so much bigger than that little bit in the middle. Everything changes because Jesus has dealt with evil once and for all. And that's what the green part of the poppy is all about. Leaves remind us that things grow, things that are good, things that are a blessing to us. And because Jesus has dealt with evil and the evil in us once and for all, we now have a job to do. He wants us to grow, to grow in loving others, in loving the members of our families, people at school, at work, our neighbors, and those who live on the other side of the world too. We need to live, live leafy lives, lives that are good and a blessing to others. So this afternoon, as we look at our poppies, as well as remembering and giving thanks for those who've given up their lives to bring freedom to this country, let us also remember that Jesus willingly gave up his life to deal with all the evil in our hearts. And because he did that, now we can, now we must, in love, go out and change the world and make it a more peaceful, a happier, a better place. Let's make sure as we go from here today, we go determined to do just that. Amen.
give us peace. For the service men and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God. May God give peace. For those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss. May God give peace. May God give peace. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends, and all who pray for their safe return, may God give peace. God give peace. For civilian women, children, and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatreds of humanity, may God give peace. God give peace. For peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free, may God give peace. God give peace. For the health service and key workers who are going the extra mile in the crisis of today, may God give peace. God give peace. For all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve, in the search for reconciliation and peace. May God give peace. God give peace. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we port our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray together in the words our Saviour gave us. Our Amen. Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen.
let us commit ourselves to responsible living and faithful service. Will you strive for all that makes for peace? We will. Will you seek to heal the wounds of war? We will. Will you work for a just future for all humanity? We will. Merciful God, we offer to you the fears in us that have not yet been cast out by love. May we accept the hope you have placed in the hearts of all people and live lives of justice, courage, and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Redeemer. Amen. Parted rest to the church, the king, the commonwealth, and all people, unity, peace, and concord, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. <laughs>